optimal health, financial freedom, finding your life purpose. It's called The Simple Life. I'm just doing it my way. Welcome to The Simple Life with Gary Collins, your how-to guide for getting your sh** together. This is life. You gotta work on all these till the day you die. The only thing missing is you getting off your butt and doing it. Hey, Miles. Uh, we haven't seen each other in a long time. It seems like we see each other all the time now. We're on World According to Ben Stein. We are. Which I eat lunch every once in a while in Tucson. And, yep. uh, you know, and you're on my show. Thank so you. I just realized this is time number four. Oh, God, is it? Yeah. I was going through because I had to put uh, the links to the show notes in there. And I think we've talked about something different every single time. There's a lot to talk about. There is. And today, you know, I wanted to, and I get asked a lot of questions on this in, in real estate and, and I do the consulting and ends up being twofold mainly how to, or three, how to start a business, uh, how to get into real estate and how to build a more rural remote house off grid or on grid, but rural. And those are all the things, well, they all kind of tie together and, you know, and it was my side hustle, real estate. Cause people always wonder how I got into it. And, uh, you know, and how do you get into it? Because if you don't do it, it's a weird world. And today, real estate is so goofy. Yeah, we've been in it for decades. Mm -hmm. And everyone, th it's not, it hasn't changed. Everyone thinks they can get rich, right? In exactly. Life. And it doesn't happen that way. So if you can explain, how did you get into real estate and how long ago? Actually, it was my wife. It wasn't me. I can't, I can't take credit for that. She, uh, she's the genius of the family. Um, so we were in Australia and we kind of fell into real estate. So I went through a pretty messy divorce in the mid 1990s. And out of that, I inherited the house. So when I inherited the house, it originally was a freehold house that we bought in Australia. And then of course, when, you know, you have to pay out the spouse in the divorce, it meant that I had to mortgage against the house. But I thought, I felt like, you know, my parents lived in the same home all the time through when, whenever I lived, we grew up, you know, it was always the same place. And I know my father before he passed away, but at his retirement, one of the, the proudest things that he ever had was he owned his own home that he paid it off. Yeah. And I felt I should do the same. So I did, but now I had a house, but I had a mortgage on it. And so I had to go and work and pay the mortgage off, but I was living in the house quite happily. And, um, you know, years and years later, I found myself in a situation where I had to leave Australia and come back to the United States, but there was this house. And I started realizing at that point that the house uh, is it's shelter, right? Cause we all need that. We need physiological shelter, but at the same time, it's a bit of a burden because you can't take it with you. So if you're going to get into real estate, you have to get into real estate on the basis that you're in it for the long term. And that if you wish to change your dynamic, you're going to have to find a way to deal with the house. So what I did was I said, okay, maybe I need to rent the house while I'm off traversing the world. And so I, found a local property manager and I spoke to them and they said, sure, you know, we can get you a tenant and we'll take care of it, you know, as they do. Um, anyway. So what was their percentage? What's the percentage in Australia? In US, it's usually like 10%. Yeah, I think whatever you're trying. Um, okay. I think so it might be as high as 12. I can't remember, but yeah, it, it floats. I think it's seven to 12, depending yeah. is what I always what paid for property management. Right. And really what you get for that is um they collect the rent and then they much. take their, their chunk of flesh out of it and they put the balance of it in your bank account and, and then wait for the next month. And then when something goes wrong, they tell you, and then you've got to pay to fix the water heater or the hole in the roof or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, that's really all they do. I mean, yeah, they find new tenants, but they don't have the power to evict bad ones. So all you can hope is that they do the right thing by you. Well, and it's interesting you say that because I, I ended up uh, a properties later, I bought four plexes and where I got property management involved. I, I had property managers in a couple different properties and it taught me a lesson. Same thing is they really don't do much. 
and and you're trying to unload your burden because it's a headache being people think being a, a property owner and and it, it sucks when you're renting out to people it, it's like babysitting mm-hmm. i used to have a saying back in the day renters are renters for a reason it sounds kind of harsh but cuz i was a renter forever but it's true in a way mm-hmm. and so you know they would stack i found they just threw anyone who who could pass the the background the credit back check <laughs> they it didn't seem like they really cared no i think you're right that's about as much as we got but we did get the rent paid every month and because i still was schlepping this mortgage around from the from the past at least i had some money to pay it off so i could somewhat put it out of my mind and move on to creating a a new life for my family in another country So a year or so later, when we came to the States, my wife and I decided that um, we would do it for 12 months and see how, it was really to see how she would react to it. Um, We also had an 18-year-old daughter at the time, an 18-year-old, 18-month-old daughter at the time. So we weren't really sure how the whole family dynamic was going to transition. And this was into California. So, But we thought we'll give it 12 months and then we'll make a decision. So what ended up happening is that within 12 months, I found myself in quite a, making quite a decent amount of money in the States, still with this house back in Australia, but I could kind of put it aside out of my mind. And um, a good friend of mine was a CFO for a big law firm in Beverly Hills. And uh, I used to do a little bit of consulting work for them. And they were family friends and we were having dinner one night and she says, uh, and I was complaining how much taxes I had to pay because I was, you know, I had no deductions. So I'd make all this great money and then I'd be writing these massive checks out to the IRS. Um, And she says, you should buy a house. I said, well, I've already got a house, but it's on the other side of the world and I'm renting this place right now. She goes, no, 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 buy a house and get the mortgage tax deduction, the mortgage interest deduction. And this is one of the only countries in the world, by the way, that allow for that. Most others don't have that. Um, So I said, well, I, I guess I could. I said, you know, I've only been back a year. Do you think anybody will give me a loan? She goes, trust me, (laughs) anybody will give you a loan. they got money coming out of their ears here. They just want to give that money away because they make fees and commission. And, you know, it was at that point I started understanding, or maybe years later I understood the actual French language definition of the word mortgage, (laughs) death contract, right? (laughs) That was when I started realizing what have I got myself into here? But I did, I signed a mortgage. We bought a beautiful house in Westlake village in California. Oh, wow. Um, That was, that was Westlake. You were ahead of the time. That wasn't very big back then. No, but you know what was weird? My neighbor was Marsha Brady from the Brady bunch. (laughs) That's nuts. Maureen McCormick, I think it was her name. Um, yeah, she was my neighbor. Go figure. I rarely ever saw any of people in our street, but I just knew that was my neighbor. Anyway, it was weird. I was kind of living that weird transient life of how the hell did I get here? Why am I living in this neighborhood? I don't deserve this. You know, I'm this kid from Adelaide. I, you know, I was going through that, but it felt good. And then six months later, they, uh, they outsourced all the work I had to India. And I was left completely without any any standing. And this, and now two mortgages, one of which was still being paid by my tenant, but this other place, um, that was 2001. And that was the height of a real estate uh, boom, which lasted probably about another six years. But yeah. I started realizing the cycles of real estate, you know, the times to get in, the times to get out and all that sort of thing. And, and then I found myself like, oh my gosh, I can't afford to stay here. My my property taxes were like $15,000 a year. I mean, it was insane and I had no money. So I was like, stupid idiot, Miles, what did you do there? So I sold the property and thankfully it was at a time, much like we have right now, where there wasn't enough real estate out there and you could sell a property in a day. And we got uh, over asking and then we paid off what we had and paid the real estate commission. And there was a bit of a, a gain. So I ended up not losing any money. And then, you know, I got a big ass U-Haul and then hauled across the desert to Arizona. And then literally for the cost of what I was paying in property taxes, I could buy a 50% larger home in Scottsdale um, and have a mortgage on that. And it was cheaper than my property taxes were in California. So then I started realizing 
what they say, you know, they go location, location, location. That's what real estate agents will tell you. In my case, it was like, no, no, state. <laughs> Pick the state that's going to suit your economics and go to it. Don't don't stay where you are just cause, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, because uh, I bought a place, bought my first place in 1998. So, and it was a condo in, in San Diego. And I, I bought it, same thing. I, you know, I was in the government, single, needed some write-offs. And uh, I had a, a very good accountant who said, hey, you need to start a side business. And I went, well, she goes, what are you interested in? I go, well, I, I, you know, I've been reading these real estate books. It was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I think you read all the same ones. Absolutely. And it got me in. It got me all fired up. And that was like my initial. And I bought this condo right before, you know, the boom. It was starting to pick up in California. I bought it in 1998. And I sold it 18 months later and made 50 grand. You know, it was crazy. I paid, I think, $109,000 for it. And I sold it for one seventy five. dollars but my net nut out of it was 50 grand, I think, in the end. And I remodeled it myself. So I learned all these skills. I learned it all on my own. I talked about this. I bought these Black & Decker home improvement books from Home Depot, took them home, studied them, started ripping everything apart and remodeled the whole inside myself. Uh, for the most part, I had a couple of tradesmen come in for some plumbing and some other stuff. And I was like, holy shit, you know, I'm in my 20s. I'm like, I, I can get rich off this, this stuff is great. Thing, same thing. I didn't realize that I was just lucky in timing. And, and I didn't catch quite, you know, I didn't have enough experience in life and not enough experience in real estate to understand that because now we're in for our age, we're in a boom bust number three. So now yeah. I got a way better idea how it works and what to look for. And so I made that money and then bought again because I was going to rent it and I, I could have made a lot more money if I would have held on to it for years. But I was in the government. I was traveling all the time. I'm like, I don't have I just don't have time. <laughs> it was one of those. I don't want to deal with this. And so I bought a place and bought another house in Albuquerque. But I'd say. It took me 12 years to realize loans suck. I've never had a mortgage since. 